So the other night I talked to um, somebody from the gay community of Chicago who's coming to orthodoxy and may become a nun, and I am overly excited to see them. Um, I really want to meet up with them. I, I can't wait. It's almost like meeting a, a celebrity or a, a, um, some superstar. Or maybe it would be like that would be for somebody else, but for me I get very excited about people who are very knowledgeable and who express things. I mean, I, I agree with her on everything, you know, um, which to me, I think it's fantastic. Now, um, I was sent a message by somebody who was really struggling over girls, very um, enamored with somebody, and that this was leading them towards God or something, and then the, their broken heart and all this kind of thing. But the thing that struck me, and this is what this video is about, is reading about orthodoxy in a book. The, uh, when I was at my old initial parish, me and my godfather, who was the subdeacon there, and our parish priest, they were laughing about the idea of an orthodox catechism. There is no such thing. There are many books out there that try to say the orthodox catechism, but it's not, they're, they're actually not. Um, orthodox theology can only be gained, and I told this to her last night, um, and, you know, she agreed, in the hymns, going to the services for a full year, that's when you hear the entire theology of the church contained in our hymns. There is no way to know about orthodoxy except going to, initially going to services and attending those services and being there for the full time. Books can aid you after that, but initially there there is no knowledge that can be gained from books about orthodoxy. It's like saying, I know about temple worship. Well, unless you actually were in Herod's or Solomon's temple, observing the temple worship, you would know about it. You could read about every book, or this or that opinion, but you still wouldn't know what it is. I mean, it's like sex. You could read all the books you want about sex, but you don't really know about it until you have sex. You have to do in order to know, and when you do, you know, and when you know, you, that means you have done. So it's, it's like that thing, to know somebody biblically, you know, to know God in the biblical sense, you take, you're baptized and you take the Eucharist. But the initial step is going to services, and it, it's not an overnight thing. Um, as I said in my other video, where it's almost like uh, that science experiment you did in grade school, where the teacher would put a, a, a stick of cut celery in blue food coloring. It gets absorbed. It's, it's the indwelling. It's the filling up. And I even talked to her. I said, isn't it beautiful how when you, when you leave service, you know, for the rest of the week you have the hymns, going over in your mind and in your heart and it's really continual prayer of the heart of you know oh son of god who rose from the dead save us who sing to thee you know my i could never be a cantor as you see you know but of intercession of the saints which is the same thing as me asking you to pray for me and i do ask you guys to pray for me um, there is no difference between that and asking that of the saints, because we know that they're alive. Christ said that even Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are alive. Um, who better to pray for us than those who have already crossed the finish line? Um, but to accept or reject orthodoxy, this is why I got very furious at, um, forget his name, uh, the Calvinist that I had talked to, uh, Figs, because he, he went to Orthodox worship a few times, and then in his video, he I think he only went twice, and he said in his video, well, then I was Eastern Orthodox. No, you weren't. You didn't get accepted into the church, either through baptism or chrismation or creed. You didn't do that. You attended worship, and good for him. Um, you know, uh, that's good that he actually did that, but he wasn't Orthodox. He just attended the service, but there is no, there is nothing you can gain from books um, initially. You have to at least have gone to one service in order to gain anything out of those books. Those books may be wrong. They don't speak for the church. The hymns speak for the church, right? Bishops can make declarations, and I love uh, Callisto Swear. He actually, uh, trans him and Mother Mary actually translated the Triodion, um, but it is the services. 
And one reason to attend Orthodox services is to know the Psalms and to get the indwelling prayer, continual prayer of the heart. But never could anybody know or even want to come to the church without actually coming to the church, coming to Orthodox parish and standing there for the three hours on Sunday, matins through liturgy, or at least just liturgy, you know. Um, you go there eight times, eight Sundays, or four Sundays and four Wednesdays or four Fridays or four Saturdays, but definitely four Sundays and four other um, services. Uh, and then you'll see. Protestants have gone there and said, I don't know whether the Orthodox Church is true or not, but I know this the, the Spirit of God was here, and this is the true worship of God. You know, They didn't convert to Orthodoxy, but they said, wow, I definitely knew that the Spirit of God was here. Uh, just like you can't know about, you can't receive the, the true Gnosis by reading it in a book, you can't. And it's not the Gnostic Gnosis, by the way. That a uh, book knowledge is a form of gnosis, but it's not the gnosis when we speak of it. Um, just like you cannot uh, fall in love and have a relationship with somebody by reading about them in a magazine. In order to have a relationship with somebody, you have to have a relationship with somebody. In order to know somebody, you have to know them. And this is the same thing with worship and orthodoxy. Orthodoxy will never, cannot be, and it's impossible to be found in a book. Um, it will never happen. Um, we're not Protestants. Protestants, you can see all their theology in a book. Our theology is living. It's never, never can be contained in a book. It is in the creed, but it's only so much in the creed as that creed is said within the church. Our, our, the orthodoxy is never to be contained in a book, and I don't know of any Eastern Orthodox Christian that would disagree with me. Eastern Orthodox tell me, <clears throat> my brothers in Eastern Orthodoxy, tell me if I'm right or wrong by saying this. Um, That's why Sola Scriptura, or trying to check, you know, any, I mean, the the scriptures, the, the, um, the Bible, nobody can tell us what it says. We are the ones that wrote it, added it, and compiled it. it it's our book. Um, you know? But um, take it easy, peace to you, may God save Serbia, Syria, and Ireland. And I hope this helps the person that I'm sending this to. I'm going to send it to a few people. Uh, take it easy, peace to you, may God save Serbia, Syria, and Ireland.